everybody. My name is Aga Palalas and welcome to the webinar on the handset. It's built-in capabilities and their applications in mobile learning. At the end of this webinar, you should be able to determine how to apply the affordances of a mobile phone to enable effective mobile learning in your specific educational context. Two key questions have to be answered in order to create effective mobile learning content, delivery and experience. First of all, we should gauge the current student readiness for mobile learning in terms of what mobile technology and mobile infrastructure they have access to and they use every day. As well as we have to ask whether they can afford data bundles that satisfy the requirements of the mobile learning applications that we are hoping to use. We have to ask questions regarding the handset availability to the student. This is the device ownership. Device readiness, which is the um, capacity of the mobile device to run those certain mobile learning applications, as well as their mobile learning device usage patterns and habits. It is equally vital to look into the mobile learning infrastructure within which the students and teachers operate. This is the uh, network connection, including the type of connection, the coverage offered by the provider, as well as the speed of the connection. We don't want to include video webinars in our mobile learning courses targeting learners who use low end feature phones and connect over the um, over a 2G connection, for example, in rural areas that have not established any um, 3G, 4G or LTE coverage yet. There are other aspects of um, user preparedness, such as awareness and attitude towards mobile learning or self-efficacy. But for the purpose of this short video, um, I'd have to leave them out. Let's have a look at the main types of the handset. Starting with the basic phone, uh, often referred to as dumb phone, it can make phone calls, voice calls, and send text. Basic phones are affordable, and although they might be a dying breed, they remain popular in some regions of the world since they offer outstanding battery life, pretty durable design, and affordable prices. Now, feature phones lay somewhere between those basic phones and smartphones as far as their features and their pricing. They offer quite a number of capabilities, for instance, an ability to capture high resolution images, listen to sounds, music, connect to social networks via built in apps, or charge the battery using a built in solar panel. Uh, with the advancement of technology, feature phones have become more and more like smartphones. Smartphones offer high-end computer-like features and options, but they are not cheap. A smartphone typically runs on a mobile operating system. The operating system provides APS, um, APIs that allow, allow third-party apps to execute. The smartphone also includes internet connectivity via Wi-Fi or and uh, 3G, 4G, OLT, a processor, a high-resolution camera, voice recorder, built-in GPS, um, a capability to run various downloadable apps, and many other features, some of which we are going to discuss in the following slides. And I will emphasize the uh, features and affordances of smartphones, mainly because it is projected that by the end of 2020, 100% of all phones sold will be smartphones across the globe. I did mention in my other webinars, though, that while the vast majority of mobile phones used in developed countries are smartphones today, in developing countries, the majority of people are still using feature phones or even uh, basic phones. But at the same time, we have to, to, to consider the rapid increase in the smartphone market share. Competition between the major cell phone providers uh, results in rapid changes to the handset landscape. Not only are smartphones and tablets increasingly more av uh, available and affordable, but the cost of data bundles is also decreasing, which is definitely good news to the teachers and learners involved in mobile learning. 
Let's take a very quick look at what the most popular smartphones are, for example, in India. Um, this is the list of those rated the top 10 smartphones in India in October 2013. Um, as you see, those are high-end phones, mainly with the Android operating system, offering various sizes of display, memory from 16 to 64 gigabytes, and connectivity ranging from 3G through 4G to LTE, as well as Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi hotspots, DLNA, and Bluetooth. In one word, very powerful computers. So considering direction the mobile handset market is taking, I will concentrate on the smartphone affordances, including both hardware and software features. And let me look at some ha hardware features of a handset, starting with wireless connectivity, which allows downloading and uploading of large amounts of media-rich educational content. And then the display, which is um, the way to, for the user to interact with the content, then audio camera capabilities helping with the uh, creation and retrieval of learning artifacts and um, educational materials, radio and television, as well as storage. The higher the storage, the more learning artifacts and materials can be stored locally, assuring a seamless online offline learning activity and then USB connectivity that provides PC to phone um, connectivity uh, that's data sync and battery recharging capabilities then we have 3G 4G LTE connectivity um, as well as GPS capabilities location aware features and the CPU itself providing the computational uh, capabilities and uh, obviously its performance is crucial for providing a good learning experience. Some of the newer um, phones, some of the newer smartphones would also have an accelerometer, a built-in electronic component that measures tilt and motion um, of the phone. These are quite often worked into some educational games, for example. As far as the software of the handset, it all starts with the operating system and then come in all kinds of user applications that um, can be utilized in the design of mobile learning. For example, internet browser. Students through the browsers access a variety of mobile learning materials. Um, they access social networks and through those they are experts and peers. Then organizers, calendars, alarms help students with their time management and thus learning management. Audio, video recorders and players help create new learning artifacts, share other artifacts as well as interact with audio, video con uh, content. Um, quite an amazing tool, for example, in language learning or field practice. Games, some education educational games um, are very powerful methods of practice and learning. Speech recognition, um, recording and retrieval tools, once again, are uh, very well liked by language learners and those that prefer to learn using audio, video or recording notes using their own vo uh, voice. Um, students can also access le learning management systems through various um, applications, um, as well as social networks, multimedia applications that potentially offer richer learning experience, mobile assisted language learning tools, um, time management and learning activity management tools, mobile context aware applications such as augmented reality applications allowing learner to interact with the environment around them um, by creating layers and interacting with layers that are um, imposed over the the objects and and artifacts in the real life setting students actually interact with the information available in the environment um, the mobile context or applications can be also used during walking tours in field practice museum tours etc 
Uh, mobile data collection applications are amazing when students go into the field practice again and um, actually capture the various experiences or information that surrounds them. And then administrative tools that are great with uh, performance support, which is a very important part of learning and training. I'd like to share with you an example of how students use the affordances of the handsets. I've looked at a study by Naker and Van der Marwe, 2012, that report on the 10 top handset affordances according to over 372 uh, higher education institution students in South Africa. Number one on the um, top 10 list was SMS. Students used it to share downloaded and download data, share um, student-generated artifacts and data. Then they used the photo cameras um, to take photos, which then afterwards they would share. The Bluetooth technology was used by almost 85% of the students. And once again, to share and download data as well as student created artifacts and information. Then video and voice recording capabilities were used by 85% of the respondents to record sounds, um, voice recording, state, take audio now, uh, notes and then exchange audio artifacts. The uh, media player used by approximately 81% of the respondents. Um, then MMS capabilities used by 80% of the students um, in order to exchange uh, various posts, wikis, blogs, uh, blogs, forums. The MP3 player would be used to review audio notes, uh, recorded sounds, um, learning, audio learning materials downloaded from the internet. And then um, email made, uh, made it to number eight. Email was used by 76% of the respondents to share and download data, uh, once again, to exchange student-generated artifacts, ask questions, communicate, um, and um, additional memory was listed by students as number nine. Um, and number 10, mobile web uh, capabilities that were used by approximately 71% of the students who um, through the web would contribute once again to the uh, web-based forums, uh, wikis, blogs, collective blogs, would access social networking sites, use the mobile mail, mobile email, um, download content, access information, access, um, access all kinds of materials, communicate with people. Other examples of how students um, can and do use these handset affordances would be for students to take photos and type along a message, record sound, or even send some animation and then exchange it with other students. They also would make videos of some practical tasks, of task demonstrations on complicated procedures, which would allow students to review them later on and other students to view what these, what these particular learners actually captured in the videos. Um, the um, iPad portable media, uh, for example, would allow us users to download podcasts, audiobooks, um, music, again, photos and videos. SMS is often used um, in both indirect and direct teaching. It's used to ask questions, provide feedback, scaffolding, supports. Um, it's used for updates and reminders. And then video, video and pictures um, are, and, and, and recorded sounds are often used um, for training, uh, for uh, language skill acquisition, um, and maybe I should mention some of the newer uh, capabilities of the phone's GPS or location um, aware exercises are a big part of uh, mobile learning nowadays. Students also make notes on their memo pads and share information via all kinds of um, um, 
applications that are av available on basic feature in uh, smartphones. And now a snapshot at how college and university students across the US and Canada um, use the various mobile phones. Uh, according to the EDUCAUSE eCar survey 2012, 62% of respondents own a smartphone. 42% of them use these devices um, for academic purposes. At the college I worked at, 99% of students actually owned uh, smartphones. Now, in 2012, the number of students owning smartphones was 55% uh, as opposed to 62% now in 2012. Also, nearly twice as many in 2012 than in 2011 said that they use um, these for academic purposes. Now, have a look that 15% of the respondents own tablets, 12% own e-readers, e um, and they use these various mobile devices for quite a number of um, academic activities. Um, first of all, they use mobile devices to access course websites and uh, syllabi. They um, access the learning management system uh, quite a lot. They check their gra grades, access financial information, information uh, register for courses, and um, they also would purchase textbooks using their phones and access library resources, amongst other things. So now that you've had a look at how, what the features of the handset are, and how students are actually using these features. I'd like you to reflect on this question. What are the three main affordances of your learners' phones? And how would you utilize these capabilities in your unique mobile learning context, considering what type of phones your students use, what the infrastructure is, where they use them, when they use them, what type of learning outcomes they use them for, and what are your students' specific needs and learning preferences.